And now it's time to begin the exciting part of our ceremony. Without further ado, <laughs> I have the privilege of introducing to all of you our second Women Making Waves Award recipient and the keynote speaker of our festival, Leland Bowden is an actor and director most notable for her role as Bex on Disney Channel's Television Academy Honors and GLAAD award-winning show, Andy Mack. You can see her currently on Apple TV's Shrinking and Netflix's series, Murderville. Credits of Lilan's also include, I Think You Should Leave, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Drunk History, Future Man, Parks and Recreation, and many more. She's a proud participant of the Disney ABC Directors Program, her and her recently directed the Disney Channel show Villains of Valley View. Her directorial debut, Becoming Eddie, was an official selection at numerous film festivals and is the inspiration for developing the TV series version in collaboration with Sony Pictures Entertainment. She comes from an improv comedy background and performs often in Los Angeles. And since college, she has kept an interest in community organizing and politics. And in her work, she is drawn to telling and amplifying stories uh, that feature people from underrepresented backgrounds. Lilan, please join me on screen to accept the Women Making Waves Award for your courageous and inspiring work in front of and behind the camera. When you give women and girls more authentic representation in the places that influence who we are, how we behave, and who we think we can become more than anywhere else. I am very honored to be presenting you with this lovely statuette for the Women Making Waves Award. Oh my gosh. And please take the stage. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Heidi. Um, and the Board of Women's Voices now. I also want to thank my fellow filmmaker and last year's recipient, Sujata Day, for nominating me. I cannot express how humbled I am to be recognized by, uh, by uh, the Board of Women's Voices now with the Women Making Waves Award. This year's 2023 films are evocative, mind-expanding, they are tragic, and they're also filled with powerful, powerful hope. If you are watching this, that means you do have a ticket. Um, probably many of you have been enjoying the film so far. We have until March 31st. If uh, you bought this ticket just because I harassed you to, um, please, please use that ticket and take advantage of watching these films. They will move you. They will change your life. So I got my start in acting and activism around the same time in high school. While I was performing as Puck in my high school play, Midsummer Night's Dream, I was also attending Amnesty International meetings, Gay Straight Alliance meetings, we didn't have LGBTQ centers yet, and I was in the debate club. I was a passionate but ineffective army of one. I stayed up late one night printing out flyers for International Women's Day on my laser printer until it glitched and then ran out of ink and I made 21 flyers total. The next day at school, as I, was, as I was passing them out, an annoying male classmate teased my efforts to asking me, well, why isn't there an International Men's Day? I seized and I said nothing, but then five minutes later came up with a comeback that was too late to say because the moment had passed. There is an International Men's Day. It's every day. When it tame, came time to apply for college, I told my guidance counselor I was honing in on UC Irvine as my top choice. She replied, Irvine is very conservative. I do not think you would be happy there. You should think about somewhere more like Santa Cruz. People are like you there and they're surfing. Uh, <laughs> I replied honestly, I do think I would be happy at Irvine. I don't want to go where people are like me. I want to go where I'll have an impact. I want to go where I am needed. I did go to Irvine and I spent four wonderful years again, dividing my time between performing improv shows and acting and running campaigns for unhoused rights, environmental protections, and making college more affordable for students. I am an actor and I'm a director now, but I have tried to never let go of the fighting for the values I believe in on a local level and through my platforms. I have been so inspired by the bravery of the filmmakers and the subjects of the film this year. The filmmakers we're awarding today are people who go where they are needed, who tell the stories who, that need to be told, in times where women are not treated equally, they do not enjoy the same privileges as men, they do not make the same pay, and are not trusted to make our own choices, there are women everywhere who are standing up and saying, this is not good enough. We deserve our space. We deserve peace. I celebrate these women today from the bottom of my heart. 
And personally, I hope to inspire women and girls through my work in entertainment, storytelling, and involvement in my community. This year's theme is holding ground under siege. For so long, including very, very recent current events internationally and here in America, women and vulnerable populations' rights have been threatened and under attack. Some days reading the news, I feel devastated and I feel overwhelmed. But what I try to remember is at the same time exists hope, community, and sharing of information. And this all strengthens with the power of storytelling. In one of the very powerful films I watched, an, an, an imprisoned woman says straight to camera, my only freedom is my story. At times where our freedom can be tested, chipped away at, or sometimes full on taken away, sometimes the only freedom we have is in our stories and in the truth we tell. And I encourage more people in entertainment to not make our truth and our values separate from our work. Let it be a part of us and let us be loud about it. Let us celebrate each other, protect each other and amplify each other. I plan on continuing to share my values and my work and on my platforms. And I look forward sincerely to learning from the stories of all the accomplished female filmmakers to come. Thank you so much again, Heidi, for this opportunity. And thank you all of you here for the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you, Ilana. That was really beautiful and thank moving. You. And we're so fortunate to be together today. I'm just going to reposition this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I get to ask you a couple questions. We're in very close proximity. Great. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to. All right. So, Lilan, you have been making your way in the industry for nearly 20 years. There's no doubt that acting and calling, <laughs> acting and directing is your plan. <laughs> so, here's my two part question. When did you know that this was the work you'd be doing in your lifetime? You said you started in high school, but you know, what was like the spark, the idea that was like, ah, I'm for performing and writing and everything. And being that when you started, when fewer people in the work looked like you, who were some of your role models and who encouraged you along the way? Great. Um, I felt like I knew what I wanted to do really early on. And I feel really lucky that I was one of those people who did it. I was surprised later to talk to people who said, oh yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Since I was about five, I, even as a very shy child, I was like, I have to be in the school plays and I have to be seen and I have to be acting. So um, yeah, yes, yeah. so from a very, very young age, it wasn't until much later on that I discovered I really wanted to be a director. And I think part of that too is like you said, that the second part of that question is that I didn't know of any female directors. I had never heard of them, you know, in high school people were talking about the, you know, Michael Scorsese and, and uh, or, or Mark Scorsese and Michael Bay, you know, like very different directors. Um, <laughs> but it just didn't seem like a world that was accessible to me. So that happened a lot later. Mm -hmm. um, as far as role models, um, people who I looked up to, uh, one of the people, since I was a, a 90s kid TV person, um, I was watching shows like Friends and Futurama and King of the Hill. And when I got hired on Andy Mack and found out that Lauren Tom was going to be playing my mother, that was a real like, mind-blowing moment for me because she was maybe the only person of Asian descent that was in all these hard-hitting shows mm -hmm. and a woman as well and I without really knowing it I had developed like this like, actor crush on her um and then to be able to work with her uh, as her daughter was just so cool. That's really cool, <laughs> definitely. And then you mentioned one of our previous conversations, both of your parents are engineers. So you're going into uh, performing arts, acting, directing, everything, not necessarily no path. No, no, I, my parents were pretty surprised and I think worried uh, <laughs> when, when I said I, I wanted to act, you know. I, I also had a love of drawing and uh, acting was so scary to my parents. My, my dad was like, are you sure you don't want to draw <laughs> instead? <laughs> that, that there could be something there. We don't know about this acting thing. Mm -hmm. um, but fortunately they were really supportive and they continue to be supportive to this day. It's beautiful. We definitely need support of our family when we can get it or the family we're born to or the family that we create along the way. Right. Sure. Yes. Okay, so my next question for you is, 
I'm always, I'm very interested in making that initial transition to director. What were some of your greatest women's voices? Now we're always talking about the struggles and triumphs of women. So what were your struggles and triumphs in directing in that transition? And then how does directing bring you to life in a different way or similar way to that of acting? Right. So I feel like a, the biggest struggle as a director, I, I've been fortunate to not have any just like outward um, outbursts of chaos um, in the projects that I've directed um, that couldn't be managed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, uh, like we were saying before, I'm still setting a precedent because there are so few of us out here. Um, I believe the uh, the amount of specifically new Asian female TV directors in 2021 was still at 2%. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest challenge, sometimes not as in the work of directing, but just understanding that I am in a more rare situation. I am, I might be the first woman director that people have worked with or and the first woman color director um, that people have worked with. And um, in order to protect myself, to make sure that there's not chaos, uh, it's really important for me to make sure I'm extra prepared and I can earn trust of everyone to say, hey, this may be me to you, but you're in great hands. I was told by an improv coach one time, Lilan, you are trying to control too much. <laughs> Just focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think because I am such a people person, uh, it's hard for me as an actor sometimes to just kind of put my blinders on and focus on what my part is in the story without wanting to connect with everybody, making sure that everybody feels good, making sure that everybody feels successful at their mm -hmm. job. And what's really great about being a director is that I can let that part of myself free. Yeah. I can I can really be connecting with everybody on the level I want to connect with. And um, so it just really opens the, it also open, opens up the community part of me too, you know, the, the part of me that needs to be in the world, mm -hmm. um, interacting people in, with people instead of um, just uh, by myself in the corner preparing mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for perhaps a dramatic scene, which also I, I love to do, but like you said, different skill set. Yeah. And I think what's really fantastic about your example as well as, you know, it's sort of like a move, remove it from the film industry in life, we sort of corner ourselves. We think this is what I'm capable of, right? but we are multifaceted people who just have to be a little brave to take that leap into something that's not so familiar. And then all of a sudden more parts of us are lit up and it's great for the whole world, right? That's a great <laughs> point too. I think that um, what directing helps me with is just the imagination of what is uh, is possible. Yeah, And uh, that's something that, you know, even though I want to inspire other people to remember too, I, I have to re remind myself too. I, I had a box of myself of saying, hey, I'm an actor only, I'm an actor only. And um, and then, you know, I was even directing projects, but not considering myself a director, mm -hmm. right? I was directing mm -hmm. short films with um, my, my friend Wilder and, and, and just comedy film, but I was I, I had somehow dismissed those as something different, mm -hmm. like an actor who's also doing everything else, but which meant producing, writing, right. directing. Right. So being able, di directing really helps me get in touch with like my imagination mm -hmm. of just like, oh, if this, then what? If this, then what? And if, if this, then what? You know, fun. Which is also an improv thing as well. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and. So this is a good segue to my next question that this is a question I want to ask you for our filmmakers to hear. Um, as you know, our festival focuses on mostly women filmmakers. So um, I want to know what have been some of the unique challenges in showing up as a woman and a director. You already spoke about how you are you are aware of the small percentage of women directors, the smaller percentage of women of color directors, and all the things and responsibilities that come with kind of like being the first and, and that sort of thing. So just share with us, you know, what are some of those challenges that have come because of, you know, the different... Uh, different aspects of humanity that you represent and and how do you negotiate all of that 
Sure. Um, I think a, a big um, challenge when there are less of you, you are more visible when you have an achievement. Mm. Um, and you may not be held to the same standards of the people who are more likely to be in the space. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, and that's something that I love to impart on, on younger female filmmakers is that you have just as much entitlement and just as much right to learn, mm -hmm. to not know everything, to make mistakes and, uh, and to be given a chance mm -hmm. and, and to not have that chance seem like it's because you're a woman because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's another thing too as we're trying to amplify women and trying to um work for equity mm -hmm. and be because we need it right we need these stories we we you know we need more narratives to become better yeah. people more empathetic people uh because we're so visible because we haven't been given these chances it's easier for um our bosses, our peers to look us look at us and say, well, you know, you're not as deserving, mm -hmm. you know, because someone took a chance on you. Well, someone took a chance on anyone. That's right. So Absolutely. um that that I would say is 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 a unique space to live in is to uh just remind myself that I am just as uh deserving of the learning process mm -hmm. as anyone else who would naturally be given the chance without that same type of attention and scrutiny. Yes, and um, just that better relationship with the uh, possibility of failure, and that's okay too, right? Yes. So if you yes. don't get it right, you just don't get it right, and that's your that is your human right. Yes. Right. I, I struggle with it too, where especially in the director see you know failure failure is I'll do everything to to make sure it's not an option, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, so many successful directors out here are they, they, we have to fail we we mm -hmm. have to fail because then we can't learn mm -hmm. what are, what do we do we, we can't grow. So um, yeah, just being able to connect with my peers and, and, and commiserate and say, hey, this was a good day, this was a bad day, um, and, and reminding ourselves that uh, failure is um, healthy. <laughs> yes, yeah, and I feel like with a lot of our filmmakers who are making documentaries about women's rights, this is not an easy business to take care of and do, and you have to be okay with the bad days, because what we don't want is for anyone to give up. Like right. Said, we need to be telling these stories. Sometimes the only hope I have is seeing someone else on screen not give up, you know, and that's what this festival gave to me, you know, of just like, wow, if if these if these women's stories, if these people in these situations cannot give up, then like I'm I'm good, you know, uh, that that gives so much back to me. Yes. Yeah. It's beautifully said, Luman. 